What about Tony? I cannot believe he's not ready yet. Gotta take a leak, Diana. Time enough to go to the toilet? No way, Tony! You are only here in 60 seconds! You got to keep it until the first break! Hope I'll make it. Let me see the guest list. Take your place, Tony. The jingle is running. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Tony Molino Show. Big guests tonight, as always. Let me introduce them, starting from the biggest one, at least for the size of his mouth, Tyron Bombastic. Hi there, folks. It's not just my mouth that's big, pal, but you'll have to guess what else. And after the beast, here comes beauty. To the great delight of our public, particularly of men, here is the multi-talented model, actress, singer, dancer, socialite, and so on, Vicky Wonder. Hi, Tony. This evening we also have a well-renowned scientist with us, Professor Gorgonius, President of the International Ufological Committee. Good evening, everybody. And a good evening to you, Professor. And last but not least, Sergio Bolivar, the controversial polemist who's here with us to present his new book, How to Speak When You Have Nothing to Say. The subject is autobiographic, I suppose. <laughs> Certainly. Contrary to what is commonly deemed true, nowadays the most important tool for an intellectual is not a brain producing original ideas, but a lively tongue. And I am particularly grateful to mine. I use it generously, both in practical and metaphorical way, smooth or sharper than a sword, according to the circumstances. If today I am here with you, I owe it mostly to my tongue. Well, we'll devote ourselves to this interesting topic in a few minutes. Instead of Mr. Bolivar's tongue, we'd better devote our attention to Miss Wonder's anatomy. That's a far more interesting subject to discuss, as every connoisseur could tell. Oh, you are too kind. It's just that my mummy was really trying to do her best when she made me so. Not to mention some very skillful plastic surgeon. Oh no, it's all true, you know. All natural. If you don't believe it, you can always put it to the proof. I'm an intellectual, miss. I'm used to consider the essence of things, not their substance. Well, so much the worst for you. There's not much fun to have with the essence of things. I must take back what I said before about Mr. Bolivar's tongue. It appears to be so fast that he manages to twist it around itself. Well, now it's time for us to deal with some serious topic. Professor Gorgonius, these Hollywood blockbusters about alien invasions are busting all records. But is there any truth in this concept? Is it really possible that alien beings could conquer our planet? Americans have always been fond of spectacularization. If extraterrestrial beings were willing to subdue our planet, they would certainly choose a subtler approach to do it. Why destroy everything when they could seize Earth without men even realizing it? So you don't believe all that War of the World stuff films and TV series still us? Oh no, no War of the Worlds. I would rather think about another famous film, The Body Snatchers. That is a more realistic hypothesis for an alien invasion. As you remember, in that film the extraterrestrial invaders assumed the appearance of human beings while remaining alien from a psychological point of view. Cold, detached, inhuman. Well, this is a mistake that real alien invaders would never do. What do you mean, Professor? Can you explain it, please? Well, first of all, they would study us, of course, to learn the way we speak, think, behave. But how could they get to know our world so well from distances measured in light years? Oh, as a matter of fact, that would be a minor problem. Take television, for example. Do you know that all TV broadcasts are not limited to our world, but have been traveling through space for decades since the beginning of the TV era? We can easily hypothesize that these supposed extraterrestrial beings hit sort of repeaters in orbit around our planet or anywhere in the solar system in order to transcodify our transmissions and to rebroadcast them at ultralight speed wherever in the whole galaxy they want. You could have a larger audience than you expect, Mr. Molino. 
This will certainly please our producers. Oh, please, enough of these childish fantasies. We are the real aliens here. We are those who want to conquer the world and who are willing to do anything it needs to get it. You are certainly willing to do everything it needs to get the mic, Mr. Bolivar. <laughs> What I mean to say is that all these ETs are evident metaphors of all the mutations that our society, rich of competition and poor of ethical values, induces in us. It's us, those who day by day become ever more alien to ourselves, when we deny every moral principles to pursue our ambition, to achieve success, to bask in the limelight, a subject, as it turns out, that I examine thoroughly in my book. We have plenty of time to talk about your book later on, Mr. Bolivar. In the meantime, if you can't keep that famous tongue of yours still, why don't you suck some candy? <laughs> so, Professor, you are saying that up there, among the stars, alien eyes could be watching us at this very moment. Right. TV programs could turn out to be an excellent strategic observatory for extraterrestrial beings willing to learn all about our planet, to find the most effective way to conquer it. Oh, really? And why could that be so? Because, even if necessarily distorted, the image they render of our world and our society would be very useful to understand us. Newscasts reveling wars, murders, massacres, and all those criminal activities that are so diffused all over our planet. Movies are a feast of sexual perversions and insensate violence. Then there are commercials and advertising depicting a precise portrait of the cheap dreams and expectations of the common people and the way corporations generate and exploit them. And above all, there are the shows like this one, up-to-date parades of the most influential people, artists, intellectuals, managers, politicians. What better occasion to know who they are and to learn the way they dress, speak, think? And then? Then, for example, they could make perfect copies of them. Clones, replicants, just think of the miracles that even our primitive plastic surgery can perform nowadays. Not to mention genetic engineering or nanotechnology, fields in which we are barely beginners. For a science that is supposedly much more advanced than ours, it would be simple to create perfect replicas of politicians and other leaders of our society, and then have them replaced one by one without raising suspicions, and eventually, through these replicants, they could easily get to control the whole world. Oh, that's why politicians look like creepy jerks and keep making troubles instead of fixing them. But Professor, why should these extraterrestrial beings take the trouble to conquer our Earth among all the billions of planets in the universe. It is true that the universe is full of planets, but most of them are uninhabitable, poisonous atmospheres, deserts of ice or burning rocks, mephitic swamps, seas of acid. Believe me, our Earth is one of the most suitable places for life, even if most of its inhabitants keep doing their worst to change this with pollution, exploitation of natural resources, overbuilding speculation. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Professor Gorgonius, but now it's time for a few commercials. Okay, friends, keep your seats in front of your screen, and we'll return to this interesting topic in a few minutes. And you better stay with us. We keep the best for the rest of the show. You know, Professor, with an imagination like yours, you should be a writer for TV. Your theories are absurd, of course, but you make them sound almost true. No, later, later on, or I'm gonna piss my pants. And I thought you were full of air. Hey, who the hell are you? Can't you even recognize yourself, Tony? I can see you are a look-alike of sorts, but what are you doing here? Better you zip up, Tony. What's this, some sort of candid camera? You really think to cheat Tony Molino with these cheap tricks? Yes, look wherever you want, but you won't find hidden cameras here. This is really happening. But I don't understand. What does this mean? 
It means that Professor Gorgonis' theories are not so absurd as you deem them. You mean you, you are a, a, an alien, a replicant? Call me as you like, Tony. Then what the professor said is true. Most of it. Sometimes the best way to keep something secret is to put it in front of everybody. But how could he know it? Oh, Professor Gorgonius is one of us, of course. He has been one of the first to come to Earth. As president of the International Ufology Committee, he is in an ideal position to discredit the few authentic sightings and to give credit to the most improbable ones. Then you are really trying to conquer Earth? Yes, and we are doing a pretty good job of it. A lot of the most important institutions are already under our control. And what do you want from me? Well, that's not so difficult to understand, Tony. Your show is very popular, and you are a very important person, one of those who can steer public opinion. This is why I'm here, to take your place and use your influence to our ends. But that's impossible. It's my show. Oh, your show will go on, and it will keep pushing the audience towards total idiocy, making them ever more passive and easier to control. This is very useful for our purposes. I already have a couple of distasteful ideas that will make the audience go sky high. But my public, all those millions of people, will never buy it. Maybe you can imitate my looks, but what about my culture, my unique personality? How can you think to counterfeit those? Your unique personality has been analyzed in its minutest details. It manifests itself essentially in seven basic expressions nine secondary gestures, and five typical grimaces that are used in various combinations according to the circumstances. As for your culture, I have memorized the whole human knowledge to be able to cope with every possible eventuality. The most difficult thing for me will be to remember to make all the mistakes, blunders and nonsense that your audience expects to hear from you. My ex-wife, who have been married seven years, she knows me too well. You'll never be able to make her believe that you are Tony Molino. There will be no need of it. She will receive your checks regularly. And by now, that's the only thing that she cares about your marriage. My children. You visit them so rarely that they cannot even remember how you look. You mean they don't look at me on TV? TV? They prefer video games. Well, it doesn't matter. They're still my friends. Are you kidding, Tony? What friends? And what about my lovers, then? The bimbos who wait for me out of the studio at the end of the show? and the others are still in my hotel rooms and hide under my bed sheets to wait for me. You don't get off with a check with them. They expect to get screwed. Then they will be happy with the change. This body of mine is perfectly functional from every point of view, and this means that it's not subject to those failures that lately have been happening so often to you. Resign yourself, Tony. There's nobody left who can help you. Where's Tony? We are back on air in two minutes, and he's still missing. I'll go and call him! Tell him to move. A true professional doesn't waste time, even in the restroom. Don't take it hard, Tony. After all, in your life, you got more than you deserved. You know plenty about me. Do you know also that I am paranoid enough to carry this, in case fans get too wild? Of course I know. I prefer to carry something more intimidating. But you... you... you disintegrated it. How did you do that? Well, I pulled the trigger. It's what a disintegrator is supposed to do, you know. Not much different from what shows like yours do to the brains of the audience. What are you going to do to me? Oh, don't worry. It'll take just a moment and you won't feel pain. Well, not much. I've never been better. The break is almost through. Don't worry, I'll join you in a few seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Tony Molino Show.